Hello, this is Scott Buccino from telecoms.com and I'm talking to Jan Hagland, who's the CEO of Aenea. So Jan, I know that Aenea's got a reputation as an innovative company. Why don't you tell us a bit about how you think you've earned that reputation? Thanks, Scott. Innovation is very important for us uh, as a company. We put a lot of effort, money, resources and investment into that. And uh, two areas are key for us. It's 5G and cybersecurity. And we do several things in that. I mean, 5G data management, for example, uh, we have together with leading customers in both Europe and North America launched what we call the network data layer, which is really about a completely new way to build and how you, how you think about data, both in 4G and in tomorrow's 5G networks. Uh, we have innovation in IoT, uh, Internet of Things, how to manage in a secure way lots of IoT devices. We have innovation based on machine learning and traffic management. So, you know, just a few of just a few of the areas that we work on. But innovation is super important for us. So, and obviously, from what you said, um, security is a, is a major part of what you do. I'd just like to sort of drill down into a couple of those areas. Like so in the network, obviously, for people who are normally, if they think about cybersecurity, they're thinking like antivirus software or something like that. But you're you're much sort of deeper into the sort of core of the network. Can you just expand on that a little bit? Cybersecurity is a very important area and perhaps even more important right now than it's ever been. Uh, we specialize in cybersecurity for, for mobile network infrastructure and in particular we look into two areas. One is messaging security and the other one is signaling security. Uh, and all of those problems they exist today and protection is needed, but they will also be even more important in the world of 5G. 5G comes with infrastructure being more important for people, businesses and society, and then you can just imagine what cybersecurity threats will be in that, in that kind of world. So you can, you can say it's all about solving today's problem, carry them forward into 5G. We've even done studies on SMS and 5G. Sounds, so, sounds like a strange combination, mm. but you, even in the 5G world, you need to make sure that your messages will not infect your peop the people or the networks. Uh, and then s network slicing, new concept in 5G. Also some work we've done to show how network slices actually introduce new security threats. So uh, yeah, lots of different things and lots of important things to do. So yeah, I mean 5G, almost from, from day one, 5G has been spoken about in a sort of security context. Obviously we know, you know, as a journalist, I'm constantly covering stories where, where governments are stating their their anxiety about 5G security. And then there's, you know, there's also the, um, I guess, the security of the, of the subscribers and, and their data. So perhaps you could just drill down even further into the sort of 5G piece there. The, the data part of the network is really the key thing to protect. If you don't protect your data, you will not be able to, to provide a secure service. So one of the things we do then in data management is to make sure, first of all, that we have really robust systems, it cannot fail. The data needs to be there, it needs to be resilient to either planned or, or unplanned uh, failures. But then on top of that, you need to secure the data. And, and what we do, I think more than anyone else, is to make sure that, for example, data is encrypted, both encrypted at rest while it's stored, or encrypted in transmission while it's being transported either in or out of the systems. Those are a couple of the things that makes us stand out as perhaps the most secure provider okay. of 5G data management. And, and um, earlier on you also sort of alluded to um, th things like cyber attacks, and that's obviously especially topical at the moment. Um, perhaps you could tell us a little bit more about your activities in sort of preventing cyber attacks and that sort of thing. Yeah, with, with the solutions and footprint we have, with I think nine out of 10 of the biggest service providers, we're helping them with cybersecurity. That makes us see a lot of things. And, and we've seen various, uh, various things. One, one uh, I can mention, we call that hidden art. It's actually uh, proof of activity going on from probably a nation state actor towards other countries and infrastructure in other countries. It goes through the mobile network signaling and, and that's obviously something that calls for protection. Uh, we, we recommend that uh, protection comes both through solutions, so automated way of stopping these kind of attacks and expertise expertise, real people, we have analysts then that spend their time only on this, going in, analyzing attacks in different parts of the world and using that knowledge to prevent it in other parts of the world. 
OK, and just to finish off, I'm just thinking, someone who works in security, it must be quite scary sometimes, because you're constantly aware of all these sort of threats and attacks and all that sort of stuff going on. But, um, you know, looking, looking into the future, obviously the need for what you do isn't going to go away, but, you know, can you just give us some picture of how the, the world that, that you do business in is, is like to evolve over the next few years? Looking into the future, I think there are a couple of key trends which, which we see right now, and they're going to be there also for a while. One is the increased importance of security also in the world of 5G. Uh, security cannot be an afterthought in 5G. You need to deal with it up front. So I, I would see that much, much more attention will be given to that. I think the other thing we see is that given now the technology shifts, we'll see more of multi-vendor networks, best of breed networks where different specialists will deal with different parts of the network and together that's going to shape something better than what we have today. And then obviously the cloud, the underlying cloud technology, that fundamentally changes not only technology but also business. I mean technology is there, you need to run on proper clouds, you need to be agnostic to different kind of clouds, you need to scale in new ways. But also business models enable new revenue models and new kind of ways of doing business as a service with the customer base. So I think those three trends is where I see the world going right now. Okay, that's great. Thank you very much. Thank you, Scott.